what's up? It's me, Savika. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be doing something totally awesome. But before we get started, turn on the notification bell and give me a big thumbs up. First of all, I'd like to say a couple of things before we get started. One, happy Mother's Day for all of you mothers out there. If I know what Mother's Day feels like because mothers always can contribute a lot and sacrifices a lot for children, just like my mother does. Uh, and I know the feeling, and my mom tells, tells me all about the feeling it is to be a mother, and I am happy that I have her in my life. So I guess happy Mother's Day to all mothers out there. Second of all, I realized I haven't posted a video in like two months. So I'm really sorry about that because I've been having to catch up on my work. I was a little behind on work. So luckily, I don't have that much homework now. I do have some projects left, but I can do them. And I can make this video because I found some free time. And why not do this? So, and last but not least, today's video, we're going to be doing two things. One, you can see I already have a new website up here, a new natural playground, and we're going to tinker with this a bit. Second of all, in the last two videos, I promised you guys I would show you how to make a color world because I haven't sold you to that yet. So we're going to be starting off with how to make a color world. Without further ado, let's get started. To create a color world, you have to do conda, create, negative, add, Whatever the name is, I'm going to put YouTube. Hyphen is equal. Uh, oops. Hyphen is equal to equal to three point seven. Hit enter. It will do basically everything for you. And I'm going to press. Uh, you have to say yes, but I'm going to press uh, no. Because I don't want a new uh, environment just yet. I was I wanted to show you guys that, but this is if you get like this, if you get like this flooring, just don't just ignore it. It's just a regular thing that happens. But the reason I click no because I don't want another color environment because I already have two. So, and I don't want a random color environment just there because it can just get in my memory. So, but for all of those of you wondering, this is how you make a content environment. If you want, you can take a screenshot. I am good with that. And this is how you make a content environment. Pretty simple, right? The only thing you need to know is just replace YouTube with the name you want. That's really it. Anyway, to our next section. Now we're going to be using AI Neural Network, A Neural Network Playground. You can call, you can use this link, which is playground.tensorflow.org, to tinker around with the neural network. I find this really fun, so I want to share this with you guys. So we have four activation signals here: RELU, TAN, sigmoid, and linear. I would personally use RELU and sigmoid. I use that most of the time. Learning rate. This is how fast the machine learns. Wait, you don't even know what I'm talking about? Okay, let me go back a few steps. A neural network is ba a neural network is basically deep learning. So right now we're looking into deep learning here and how the machine can look at and basically process your information and display the output slash data. This is basically a computer learning for your brain. So this acts exactly like your brain, except in a computer. Now, let me go for a few steps now that you know that. We're going to be looking in this video a little bit about deep learning. We're not going to touch on it because we uh, I have not opened color yet and I want to play around with this first so everyone understands everything. First step, 
A learning rate is how fast the machine learns. You can pick from any one of these 10 or 0 0.001. Yeah. Activation. I will use tan hat sigmoid and linear. These are the four activation signals. I use RLU and sigmoid because they're the most useful to me at least. But you can use tan and linear too. Regulation is non L1 and L2. And it's the regulation rate. Exactly like the learning rate. The problem type is classification or regulation. Classification is basically when you separate things. Now, you must be wondering, X, what is X1, X2, X1, 2, X2, 2, X1, X2? So, oh, that's a lot of math. But we're not going to get into that. Why? Because you learn the sin X1 in high school and sorts like that. But we're not going to get into that because this video is made for kids and I don't want anyone to get too confused. So, we'll, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to learn about the mechanics without learning about the mathematics, if you get what I mean. Now, data. Which data set you want to use? You can use this one, these uh, four shapes one, these little clusters, or these little this spiral. Wee! And there is three types of layers. One is the input layer, where you input what you want. It'll track into a hidden layer, where all basically the process is processing. And it will lead straight to the output, which is this thing. The best thing about it is when you scroll down, it can tell you um, what is a neural network. This is cool. Can I repurpose it? What do all the colors mean? What library are you using? And some credits. Here are the credits. I will, I will put this on in the link in the description so I don't get copyrighted. We'll see if I get copyrighted or not. I hope not. <laughs> um, well, yeah, that's about it. So, let's do this. There's a bunch of things here. So, we can add multiple hidden layers if you want. This is the output for one neuron. How would you like to see it larger? Oh, cool. And you can add as many as you want. Up to eight. <laughs> that's the max. I like all but now we can make make the bad size maybe oh, 20, 30, yeah. Now this is the F push. And you can click on play. It'll create this little spiral, and this is how much air push is getting. And you might see, look, there's a line right here. What is this? Well, and this line is to show you the test loss and the training loss. What is test loss and training loss? Test loss is basically how much things you don't need from testing, like data you don't need from testing. Like say you were writing a couple of notes down on for a, let's say a science test. You look over them at home and you realize, oh, I don't need I don't need this note. I don't need it for my test. And you cross it off. This is test loss. Training loss, however, is how much you don't need during training. When you memorize all of them, when you memorize all of them and you start to learn them, during that you realize you don't need this note. What's the difference between both of them? Test loss is when you look at that from the beginning and say, I don't need that. Training loss is when you look at them in kind of at the middle and realizing, wait, I don't need that. So that's basically what test loss and training loss is. And you can see they're coming quite together. And wow, they're posted 4,500. Oh, wow, that's a lot. And yeah, that's really it. I'm not going to go too much into this because... I don't want to 
basically crumble anyone's mind. So I'm gonna put, I might, I will somehow post a link if I can into the description or I'll post it sometime later. But you can use playground.tensorflow.org. You can just use this, okay? You don't need to use all of that. But use playground.tensorflow.org to look at how all of this is done, really. How all of it's done. You can play around with the activation, like if you want hands. I never really used that before. See, and these come out straight lines. And it's different test laws and training laws every single time. Oh, and that's going down. It's, it's different every single time you change it, every single time you do. So, you don't really need to worry. It's not a big thing. The only reason I'm showing you this is so to understand how everything works. But I asked my teacher a lot of questions when I went over this. And I asked her everything about this. So... You don't need to worry about all of these because these are big mathematics and we're not going to look over the mathematics in this video. But that's it for this video. Subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, bell, give me a big thumbs up, and we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!